good. You can see it. Doing good?
everyone. Good to see you in the house of our Lord today. Praise the Lord. Good to see all of you gathering in. Pull out your bulletin, if you will. Now, I want to embarrass somebody. Is that all right, Irene? I'm trying to see if I can find him. Where's Charlie Purvis? Charlie, are you here today? He's not here today? Oh, my goodness. He's turning 80 years old. Where's Charlie? Oh, my goodness. I tell you what, when y'all see Charlie Purvis, those of you that know him, say the pastor said, I couldn't remember if he was turning 80 or 100. I just wasn't quite sure. <laughs> Miss Irene. Well, good morning, everyone. It's good to see you all here in the house of our Lord. So we're here for to worship and praise our Father together Amen. Amen. and to encourage each other. So let's uh, continue to do that. Um, remember to sign in either on your phone or with the uh, uh, people out front when you come in. We're no longer using the Red Book, so we're keeping track that way. We ask um, anyone here who has never been here before, here for the very first time, if you would stop by the guest center, which is on the left in the lobby after the service, they have a gift for you and uh, would like to give that to you to take home so that you can remember your time with us today. Hopefully come back next Sunday or any time during the week. As you look at your bulletin, you'll find different opportunities for you to have fun food fellowship and increase your faith. So be sure to look at that and see what meetings you're supposed to be at. If you're on any of the committees or if you're a member of one of the Bible studies, or would like to go to one of the Bible studies. We'd like you to encourage, to encourage you to come to those also. This week, the Steward Bible Study with Roger Blanton starts back up. We're excited about that. It's 1030 on Wednesday in the chapel. And of course, the chairpersons are encouraged to come to that so we can discuss the church business after the meeting, after the study. Also, the survey that they're passing out, um, it's a little unusual survey, but we'd like you to look at it. And some are trying to do it online, but you can't fill it in online. You have to print it and turn it in. So do the best you can with the survey. And if you have any question, Roger's out there passing them out in between the services and after the services. So um, just do the best you can. We're trying to open a dialogue here. So look at the questions more than how you want to answer them and then talk about it. Amen. and get a conversation going. We really need to know where our community is, is headed and where you want us to go. Mm -hmm. So think about it Good. and pray about it. Also, we have um, the Wednesday family um, worship time is back this Wednesday, and we'd like to see more people come. So everybody that has been in the past part of that would like you to come back and have a good time also, if anybody else would like to come, that would be encouraged also. We have a combined service on the first, which we're all excited about. They've always come, they've always been quite well attended. And so we're hoping to see this one well attended. It's also um, not just a celebration of coming together once a month, but all, or once a quarter, but also it's our 21st anniversary of being in this church, and we'd like to celebrate that. So please come and encourage everyone, bring family, friends, and as we get ready to celebrate, are you ready to get your worship on? Yeah. Okay. Let's have the worship team as they're preparing. Everyone, if you'll stand together, as you know, the altar is always open. This is a beautiful time of prayer and worship and celebration. Um, I always like to now just offer a couple of folks for you to pray as you're coming forward. Checked on baby Waylon, uh, um, our little baby, our youth director's child, this last, uh, yesterday. So just keep them still. It's every week getting closer to coming home. Um, also Lloyd Fisk. Many of you remember Lloyd was over our finances for a good while. He's having surgery this week up north. 
Uh, and Mary Snowden comes to this service. Many of you may know Archie and Mary. They were here last Sunday. Mary had a pacemaker put in. She texted me about six o'clock this morning. She said, I just want everybody to pray for me. I'm at home, I'm doing well. So if you wanna pencil that into your prayers as well. The altar is open, we encourage you to use it. Praise team. One, two, three, four. remains open and we want folks that feel led to pray for our world at this time. We're always commanded by the Bible to pray for Israel, forefathers, foremothers of our faith. So we need to be lifting them up, all that's going on in the Middle East and the Far East, Russia and the Ukraine. So if anybody feels so led, I would encourage you to come stand in the gap for them.
us and guide us in this worship hour together. Doesn't the praise team do a wonderful job? Thank you, Brother Jerry and team. Very much. If we have any of our children here today, I know a few are here. Let's come up for our story and our prayers for the leaders of Sunday school as we do each week. We appreciate you so much. Guys, if y'all just gather up here with me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All righty. We got to put our hands up in the air and say, long, long, long time ago in a faraway place on the Wiflacoochee River. Reverend Bullywing Bullfrog, you remember again, what's the bullfrog say? Rivet, 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 rivet. They were all sitting around. We've been saying it this way for the last couple of weeks around a campfire. Don't you like sitting around a campfire? The critters do. You know, they're all sitting around the campfire and they're having s'mores. They're having uh, maters and taters for supper. They're having chocolate darling dove cheesecake. And they're having fried lily pads that taste just like fried chicken. You know the story well. So they're sitting there and Bullywink raises the theme of the week, just like we're doing here in our service today. And it is be filled with the Holy Spirit. What in the world does that mean? Well, when he said that to the critters, they're under a big live oak tree. All of a sudden the branches, you know, are, are screeching up there. And Bullywink said, oh my, he said, you're right. Your story is so important. Live Oak story. And he said, do y'all know the story? I'm going to remind you of that. How that the Live Oak came alive in the Woodland community and became a preacher. They call him Reverend Liver Oak. Maggie Nolia goes, Weeping Willow goes, Mr. Piney Cone, and all the shrubbery. They all attend there. Now they have great church services. How did it start? They were filled with the Holy Spirit. It happened like this, Bullywink said. It was so dry. It hadn't been any rain. It was so hot. And this live oak tree just stretched. Y'all can stretch with me. Y'all want to stretch with me? Stretch. Do your aerobics here early this morning. Stretched his creaky limbs up. Not that you have creaky limbs. Stretched his creaky limbs up to the sky. And he said, God, please send the rain. And when he did that, all the other trees saw that and tried to do the same thing. And a miracle happened. A big cloud came and the rain came. And it was a gully washer. Rain everywhere wear so much that two little acorns, aim corn and main corn, jumped on a big turkey oak leaf. Y'all ever seen a turkey oak leaf? You know what that is? That big old oak leaf that looks like a turkey spur. And they jumped on it and they just used it like a skateboard or a surfboard all up and down until they hit the splash at the bottom of the tree. It was amazing. And after that, Live Oak, he became a preacher, as I said, Reverend Live Oak, and he had church every Sunday and all the critters would enjoy them. Now, how can they be filled with the Spirit when they're trees and their bushes and their limbs? I mean, you know, I mean, how, they can't even get up and move, right? But they have roots and Root Connection International, right? The RCI is the connection underneath with the rainwaters coming down and it soaks in the roots and it goes to all the different trees. And so they have church every Sunday like we do. And he said that's how they were filled with the Holy Spirit. So it's a command of God. When you ask Jesus to come into your heart, Bullywink told the critters, he said the Holy Spirit, that power of God comes inside, but it's up to us to activate it. It's like if you go into a room, there is light in the room, but until you flip the switch to turn the light on, you know, you don't have the light. 
And some of us forget to turn the lights off. Parents, can you say amen? Sometimes we have to keep reminding our kids and grandkids, turn the light off, right? Well, you should never turn the light off of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for filling us with the Holy Spirit. Your love is inside of every one of these young people here. Bless their Sunday school hour. Bless us in this hour in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Ethan, can you grab the bucket there? Stand up, turn around, greet one another. Our prayers for Sunday school this morning. Let's gather back to our pews and remain standing for our scripture reading this morning. Let's all gather back to our pews. Thank you. Our scripture this morning is Ephesians 5, 15 through 20. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Word of God for the people of God. Maybe seated, and if we can turn the bulletin over, I always like to encourage you when Bobby comes to lead us in prayer to hold the prayer requests that we have and add the new ones uh, that we have here, the ones that we lifted up earlier, especially Mary Snowden. You may not have had that, so if you can pencil that in just so you have that in front of you. I have a praise report to begin with our service, Bob. Um, I want to thank the Lord for Chip and Tammy, and Jerry that leads this service. Um, many of you have heard that Andy has stepped down uh, as our tech director, and these folks have just jumped up, spent many hours. Tammy was supposed to have this Sunday off. We appreciate that. Chip spent hours, Jerry extra hours, and I think we should just praise the Lord. Thank you for doing that. Thank you. You're very kind, very kind, very kind. Um, before you pray as well, Bob, Chip, can you put the scripture up there? This is something we said we would do every week before we um, have election. <laughs> I think that we need to share this verse together. So let's just read it together. Please remain seated. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will hear their land. We are confessing the sins of our nation, we as a church, and asking the Lord for mercy and grace. Bob? Good morning. It's good to see all of you in the house uh, once again because um, God is good and all the time. God is good. I, I got to put somebody on the spot I just recognized in our sanctuary. Mike, Melinda's husband, is sitting in our in our midst. Mike's good to see you. Hey, good to, see, good to have Mike in there. We put Mike on the spot. But once again, we 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 so grateful and so gracious to be in, in God's house. As we usually say back home, it's so good to be in the number one more time. <laughs> so uh, again, um, we thank all of you for your attendance and those that are tuning in online. We're just giving back a portion to what the good Lord has given us. You know, it's been a trying week, but we know God is still on the throne. He still watches over us, and he still cares. So I'm so thankful that he forgive us for our sins, and he allowed us to come to a place as sisters and brothers in Christ to give him praise and to give him thanks. Uh, I want to add our own Patty Potts to my prayers this morning. I spoke with her briefly. Her blood count is a little low, so we're going to pray that 
it get rises up to where it's supposed to be. And it's good to see our, our brother Ron Starkey, they made a trip up north. There was one of his wishes to go back. And I asked brother, did he keep him <clears throat> everybody straight? He said, Bob, it's a tough job, so. And Ron, it's so good to see you um, uh, in our midst today. Um, so as our music um, plays softly today, a pastor states that our altar, our altar is open for you to come, the names that he lifted up. Uh, just come and, and, and fill the gap for somebody that didn't make it this morning. Somebody got up and just wasn't able to get here. So we gonna remember those folks because our name could have been on that prayer list this morning. When God has smiled on us once again. So we were able to get up on our own accord this morning and come to a place well, we worship. Our altar is open for you to come as we bow our heads and go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Father God, we come to you once again, so humble but so bold. Your children is coming to give back a portion of what you've given us. You have blessed us this far. You have brought us this far not to leave us nor forsake us. But how can we ever repay you for all that you've done? Father, we know without you, there's no other. Without your hope, there's no tomorrow. Without no hope, there's no future. But fill us with your grace, with your spirit, with your mercy. Father, we thank you for the strength that you invested in all of us, that we walked on our own this morning. We walked in the front doors and come to a holy place where we can say amen, where we can say thank you. I'm so glad to worship with my sisters and brothers because we're not ashamed of the God that we serve. We're not ashamed to lift him up. We're not ashamed to give him praise and thanksgiving. That's why we praise you. That's why we love you. Because you've been there, you hung on the cross, you was buried in a tomb, and on the third day, you ascended into heaven and stood by the right hand of the Father. That's why we love you. You gave us a right to the tree of life. You gave us all that we have. You're all that we know. And Father, you're more than enough. When our cup is running low, Father, you fill us up. When we're doubt, boy, you renew our strength in the Lord. So right now, we give you praise. We thank our pastor for all the names that he's lifted up on our praise report. Father, you gave us those names just a few years ago. You created us in your image. And right now, I ask that you would search the souls and anything that not like thee. Father, we ask that you take it away and fill it with your goodness, with your mercy, with your grace, with your love, oh, and your kindness. That's why we love you. That's why we lift you up. That's why we say thank you for all that you've done. And right now, Father, those that we have in hospitals, we ask that you go in the room. Father, feel the atmosphere. Let your love fill the room. Let your spirit fill the room. Father, we ask you that your healing touch fill the room. And we ask that you go in nursing homes, somebody lying there looking to the hills. Ask that you go in county jails, that somebody in county jails, Father, need a breakthrough. Somebody in the county jail need the chains broken and let them come to a place with a testimony. I once went down the wrong road. Father, you set my feet on the right track. For your word says, take thee and follow me. Father, help them to pick up that cross. And Father, we ask that you go in rehab centers. Somebody struggling with an addiction. Somebody brought it to the church this morning, asking for forgiveness and asking for the strength to be better today than I was yesterday. That's why we love you, and that's why we praise you. 
And Father, ask that you look on our nation. Remember Israel this morning. Father, Israel's one of the chosen ones. Father, they're fighting a battle that's already won. Father, look on Ukraine and Russia. Father, remind them that they're better together than they are apart. That's why we give you praise and thanks. That's why we lift you up. That's why we call on the name. Because there's power in the name. There's healing in the name. There's comfort in the name. Father, we come today because there's a purpose. Show us our purpose and our meaning. Some are wondering why we still here. There's a cause. There's a reason for the season. And I ask that you look on our church today. Father, help us to make decisions that are not for ourselves, but for the better and the good of our church, that it will shine in a reflection of, of how we live and how we praise you and how we give back to you. That's the church that we dwell in. That's the church that we praise in. That's the church that you give us on solid ground. Father, look on our pastor today, the family. Remember, Joey, each week we pray. Father, search the soul. And Father, the message that we read together said that if my people will humble themselves, change from their ways, Father, you will heal the land. The word says if we can just touch the hem of his garment. The word says by your stripes that we are healed. And as our worship team come, we thank you for the altar call today. Somebody come and got on bending knees. Somebody is surrendering all their heartaches. Somebody is surrendering all their discomfort. Somebody is giving up their bad habits. Somebody is calling on the knee, the name, on bending knees today at the altar. And those that are at home tuning in online, they're giving back. Somebody is surrendering it from their bedside at home. Somebody's standing with their arms open wide, said, Father, here I am. Take me, I'm yours. Oh, that's why we love you and we praise you. Father, look on our messenger today. Let the words and the message that they give today be feeling. Let it be comforting. Let it resonate with someone. Let it fill the house and touch those that are online. Father, we pray this prayer in, in faith and in truth. And may all of God's people say. Can we say amen again? Let's all rise together. Bobby, we love your prayers so very much. Powerful. We do wish, dear brother, your clothing wouldn't be closer to the gator colors, though. That's just... Uh, I'm giving him a moment to get on the drums there. Love you, brother. The altar is open. Let's continue that spirit of worship and celebration. Thank you. 
Heavenly Father, we give you praise and glory. Truly, you are the King of kings. You are the great I am. You're everything that we need, everything you need, church. Everything that you need is right here in the Holy Spirit. God has got this. God has got you. God will take care of every single need. And may all of God's children say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We are delighted on the third Sundays to always ask one of our lay ministers, our retired ministers, to share the Word of God. Dodd has been working on this message for weeks. The Holy Spirit has moved in her heart. She has a word for all of us from the Lord. Amen. Dodd? I got to tell you that I don't think Satan wanted me to give this message this morning because he has tried everything almost that he could possibly do to keep this from happening. But I'm going to ask you to pray with me before we begin, please. Heavenly Father, I ask your guidance this morning to share the words that you have given me about the miraculous and wonderful gift of the Holy Spirit. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable and honor you. In Jesus' precious name, amen. What if one day you went out to your mailbox and you find a recall notice and the recall notice states, the maker of all human beings, God, is recalling all units currently in operation, regardless of maker model, due to serious failure in the central component of the heart. This defect is technically known as SIN. Symptoms include, number one, directional and control issues. Number two, no filter causing foul emissions. Number three, source of manufacture is missing. Number four, inadequate braking system causing violent misdirection. Number five, electrical system has malfunction causing carelessness. Number six, does not function as manufactured, causing sliding into idolatry, which can result in making wrong turns and failure to believe. The manufacturer is neither liable nor at fault for these failures as these units were given intelligence from their manufacturer and ability to choose between different courses of action. The repair technician, Jesus, has generously offered to bear the entire burden of the high cost of these repairs with no additional fee. The number to call for repair is 772-937 or P-R-A-Y-E-R. -E Note, no matter how big or small the S-I-N failure is, through the Holy Spirit of God, it will, be, it will be replaced with all new parts of wisdom, understanding, counsel, strength, knowledge, living toward holiness, and fear and reverence of the Lord. In order to fully understand these recalled part replacements, Please read the manufacturer's operating manual, the B-I-B-L-E, for specific details. Thank you for your attention. Signed, God. Our scripture this morning comes from Ephesians 5. And Paul most likely wrote this to the letter to the church in Ephesus about 60 to 62 A.D. But the issues that he wrote about sound an awful lot like 2024. 
The first three verses begin by warning, be very careful how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, because the days are evil. Don't be foolish and don't get drunk, which leads to more evil. Now, I want you to think about when you were in high school or college. Now, I know for some of us that was a long, long, long time ago. What did those around you at that time consider a rip-roaring good time? Now, if you were already a Christian at that time, your idea on theirs was probably just a slight bit different. Christians were generally considered really dull and boring. You ever been called goody two-shoes or a prude? Because your friends didn't really understand that you didn't want to party with them and get drunk. This isn't a new problem. It was a problem when Paul wrote Ephesians. So that's why Paul told the Ephesians and us what God does not want us to do. But then Paul turns it around through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and tells us what we should do. Instead, we're to seek the Lord's will, do good at every opportunity because Satan takes every opportunity for evil. So how do we accomplish this? The only way that we can truly accomplish this is by being filled with the Holy Spirit. We need to understand what and who the Holy Spirit is. But most importantly, we, know, we need to know what he can do in and through us. The Greek be filled with the Holy Spirit is plural, which means filled and refilled. So we aren't just filled with the Holy Spirit once. We need to continually be filled with the Holy Spirit. Even after we have accepted Jesus as our Savior, we continue to struggle with the old sin nature. And we still sin. Then we ask the Holy Spirit to come and fill us. In verse 19, Paul tells us we're to encourage each other with songs from the Spirit. The music we heard this morning were very wonderful songs from the Spirit. Now, I've heard Christian music before and some of the cantatas that we've had here even that have just filled my heart and caused me to cry at the same time, filled me with joy. But guess what? The Holy Spirit does connect with us through music. Everyone who believes in Jesus has been, and has been redeemed by God's grace, even if you can't carry a tune in a bucket, you become a part of God's symphony. God's masterpiece of salvation and redemption is the symphony music. Through the Holy Spirit, we are able to hear and sing from our hearts and become an ongoing part of the music and the harmony of God. When Paul wrote this letter to the Ephesians, life throughout the Roman Empire was in shambles. People couldn't agree about anything. Divorce and adultery were running rampant. Men didn't want to be men, and women didn't want to be women. And marriage was in danger of a complete and utter breakdown. Does this sound familiar? In my Bible, verses 21 through 29 are entitled, Instructions for Christians 
and Christian households. And it covers all relationships in how to practice holy submission as Christ loved the church. The Greek word for submit is hippotasso, which was actually a military form uh, term that meant to arrange under. When a company of troops would hippotasso, they would arrange themselves in formation under their leadership, authority, and higher power, their commander. So who is our higher power and authority? It should be God. When we, then we tend to gloss over verse 21, and it actually points a finger at all of us when it says, submit to one another out of reverence and honor for Christ. This means, through God, all of our relationships, your neighbor, your friend, your enemy, your marriage, your family, everyone, that relationship should be holy and in reverence to Christ. The message version of Philippians 2 tells us, if you have gotten anything at all out of following Christ, if his love made any difference in your life, if being a part of the community of spirit means anything to you, if you have a heart, if you care, agree with each other, love each other, and be deep-spirited friends. Don't push your way to the front. Don't sweet-talk sweet your way to the top. Put yourself aside. Then the message version of Ephesians 5.29 says, No one abuses his own body, does he? No, he feeds and pampers it. That's how Christ treats us, the church. Since we, the church, is a part of his body. Our reverence for God should greatly affect how we speak and relate to everyone. This includes our Christian brothers and sisters who represent the bride of Christ, the church. We need to be aware we are to relate as Jesus would with our Christian brothers and sisters and everyone for that matter, or we offend the bride of Christ, a, body, a part of Jesus' body, the church. If we are like Christ and filled with the Holy Spirit, we should live, love, and talk like Jesus as we interact and serve others. Then and then only are we truly serving the Lord, not ourselves. As Christians, we're to submit to God and believe in Jesus as our Savior, right? But do you ever remember Jesus seeking personal submission from any man or woman while he was on earth? What about the woman that the Pharisees brought to Jesus who had committed adultery? They were going to stone her to death. Jesus said, all right, but... Let the one who has never sinned throw the first stone. Well, we know what happened. The, the crowd slowly went away. And Jesus turned to the woman, and he could have berated her. He could have 
It chastised her because she was a sinful woman. But instead, Jesus said, where are your accusers? Didn't anyone condemn you? And the woman says, no, Lord. Jesus said, neither do I. Go and sin no more. Jesus treated all men and women with love, respect, and he cherishes each one of us. Throughout the New Testament, we're commanded to speak, act, and love like Jesus. Even the love and the relationship between a husband and wife was intended to be centered on their commitment and love to the highest power, God. This scripture from Ephesians 5 is not a struggle over power, whether it's marriage or any relationship. Jesus should be the one in charge, just as he is head of the church. God's purpose for marriage extends far beyond our personal happiness. The marriage that God instituted promotes godly values and a home filled with the Holy Spirit to glorify our Savior. So who is the Holy Spirit that we are to be filled with? The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is fully God, co-equal and co-eternal with God the Father and God the Son. Thus, he is a full part of God. How do we receive the filling of the Holy Spirit? As Pastor mentioned a while ago, when we accept Jesus as our Savior, through faith and by God's grace, place our faith and our lives in following Jesus, we receive the gift and access to the Holy Spirit as our comforter, teacher, and guide. But we have to let him in, invite him in, just like we do Jesus. When Jesus died, the temple veil was ripped in two, top to bottom, unveiling the Holy of Holies in the temple where the Spirit of God resided. That torn curtain gave all believers direct access to God. The Spirit of God no longer dwells in a temple or a building as he did for many, many years. Instead, God's Holy Spirit lives and dwells within each believer who welcomes him in. Does the Holy Spirit make me holy? The, Bible, the biblical word holy comes from a Hebrew word, which means to be separate and set apart for a specific purpose. Holiness is the natural state of God, not us. Have you ever watched a child pick up a piece of Swiss cheese and put it up to their face like a mask and peek through the holes? Well, that Swiss cheese mask could very well look like our walk with Jesus. Our humanness causes us to be H-O-L-E-Y, like the Swiss cheese, but not H O L. Why? But when we allow the Holy Spirit to help us seek to attain godly characteristics, he leads us into a path toward holiness. The message version of 1 Peter 1 tells us, so roll up your sleeves, get your head in the game. Be totally ready to receive the gift that's coming when, Je <clears throat> when Jesus arrives. Don't lazily slip back into those old grooves of evil, doing just what you 
feel like doing. You didn't know any better then, but you do now. As obedient children, let yourselves be pulled into a way of life shaped by God. A life energetic and blazing with holiness. God said, I am holy, you be holy. So what does the Holy Spirit do? These are a few, but not all, of what the Spirit does and is. Number one, the Holy Spirit first plays a major role in our salvation. It's the Holy Spirit that brings conviction to the unbeliever. Jesus told his disciples in John 16, it will be better for you if I go away because if I don't go away, the helper will not come. But if I do go away, I will send him to you when he comes. He will show the people of this world what they are like. He will show clearly that they are wrong. They are wrong about what sin really is. They're wrong about who is right with God. They're wrong about how God judges people. Then Jesus repeats himself with an explanation. They are wrong about sin because they do not believe in me. Number two, the Holy Spirit reveals to us the truth of God's word and the gospel of Jesus. The sword of the Spirit is God's word. Remember in Matthew 4, when Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan? So we know the Holy Spirit was with Jesus. Each time Satan tried to tempt him, Jesus used Scripture, the sword of the Spirit, God's word as his defensive weapon against the temptation and powers of Satan. That should pretty much tell us that we need to be prepared and do the same thing. Number three, even if we are in situations where we can't talk or pray, the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. In Romans 8, we read, the Spirit helps us when we are very weak. We don't know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit himself speaks to God for us. He reads our hearts. He begs God for us, speaking to him with feelings too deep for words. God already knows our deepest thoughts, and he understands what the Spirit is saying because the Spirit speaks for his people, that's us, in the way that agrees with what God wants. Number four, when we accept Jesus as our Savior, Ephesians 1 tells us, when you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance. That's important. The Holy Spirit is our seal. He seals our identity in Christ. And he's also our deposit, guaranteeing our eternal inheritance. What does being anointed by the Holy Spirit mean? There were a number of people in the Old Testament that were anointed by the Spirit of God in order to do the work that the Lord gave them to do. Moses, Samson, David, to name a few. And then in the New Testament, all four Gospels tell us of Jesus' baptism and his anointing by the Holy Spirit. Anointing with oil represents the presence of and the power of the Holy Spirit. It is a symbol of the Holy Spirit coming upon us to heal, empower, and bless. The scripture in James 5 about anointing 
has special significance for me. It says, is anyone ill? They should ask the elders of the church to come and pray for them. The leaders should put some olive oil on the sick person. They should pray for them with the authority of the Lord Jesus. With the confirmation of this scripture, I'd like to share with you one of my personal experiences and encounters with the Holy Spirit. In 2013, I was experiencing back pain. And I was told that I had bone spurs on the lower part of my spine that needed to be removed. I had the surgery, and they were removed, and I was still in pain. My husband took me to the emergency room. The doctor that had done the surgery was actually in the hospital, so he came down to the emergency room, and he ordered pain med medication for me, pain management. I went to the pain management doctor, and he gave me a shot. And apparently, it was too close to the wound site. Because exactly 13 days later, I was in excruciating pain. I couldn't walk. I couldn't sleep. I had to sleep in the recliner, and I was in constant pain. I was then referred to an infectious disease doctor who did a battery of tests, and the conclusion was that I had an infection inside the bone at the base of my spine. She told me that this would never go away, but with six to eight weeks of intravenous injections administered twice a day, took about an hour each, the infection should go dormant. A nurse came to our home and actually showed my husband how to administer the IV into the port. God bless my husband. He was nurse, caretaker, cook, did everything that needed to be done for three months or more. During this time, I was so ill and such, so in pain, and I felt like such a burden, I began to sink into a deep pit of despair. Quite honestly, I just said, Lord, take me. Then one day, Pastor Eddie, Don Hossible, and Debbie Wright came to our home. Now, some of you will remember Don and Debbie, both dear soldiers of the Lord. We prayed together. They anointed me with oil, and then we prayed some more. And while we were praying the last time, I began to feel the Lord literally lift me up. The Holy Spirit was there, and he lifted me up. This encounter gave me a beautiful new appreciation of just how precious our association is with the Holy Spirit. May the Holy Spirit empower each of us to live a life that brings glory to God and blessings to all those around us. Our constant prayer in order to get through this life should be, come, Holy Spirit, fill us. Come. Can we all say amen? amen. Hallelujah. What a message. I told you it was from the Lord. 
for all of us. Let's stand together. During the last song, if you would like to just come and pray, fill me, Holy Spirit. Because as, as uh, Doc just shared with us, it's not a one-time thing. It's an ongoing experience. So maybe you just need another infilling of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. And she'll be in the back here at the end to greet you. But what a word of the Lord. I remember that so well going out to her house and seeing God miraculously uh, bring healing and, and the emotions, the spirit, the physical uh, for her. That was just over the top. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The altar is open. I know a place where we can go to lay the troubles down in your soul. I know a place where mercy flows, takes the stains, make it whiter than snow. Like a tide, it is rising up deep inside a current that moves and makes you come alive. Living water that brings the dead to life. Going down to the river, down to the river, down to the river to pray. Yeah, yeah. Let's get washed by the water, washed by the water. Rise up in amazing grace. Let's go down, down, down to the river. You will change. Let's go down, down, down to the river. today. May the Holy Spirit guide you, lead you, direct you. We hope we'll see you next Sunday morning. May the Spirit be with you. Turn around and greet one another. Hallelujah. See you next week. We're going down to the river, down to the river, down to the river to pray.
Yeah, I wanted 